Good night. Welcome to Change Life Deaf Church Bible Study. We're so happy that you've joined with us tonight, and we hope that your knowledge about God and His ways will increase every week. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this time. In your word, we pray that your Spirit would teach us tonight and help us to Get the information about your ways. We pray that you would help us to follow you continually. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. We're continuing our study of Mark chapter 14. It's part two, and it's very important because what Jesus does here continued on until today. We do the same thing that Jesus did a long time ago. Let's see. We're studying verses 22 to 42. And the topic is the Last Supper and Jesus Arrested. Okay? Now we talk about the Last Supper because we remember today, we call it communion. We're going to talk a little bit about that, but let's see what Jesus himself did with the twelve. Verse 22. While they were eating, Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it. He broke off some pieces, gave them to his followers, and said, Take and eat this bread. It is my body. It's very important for us because we do it today. We have communion. We remember it's Jesus' body. And he broke it. And his body was broken, beat, injured. And the breaking of the bread shows that. He broke his body, the pain and the suffering. It's an example for us to remember that what he did. And with the twelve, he told them to do it continually. Verse 23. Then he took a cup of wine, thanked God for it, and gave it to them. And they all drank from the cup. So now we have the wine and the bread. Verse 24. Then he said, This wine is my blood, which will be poured out for many, to begin the new agreement from God to his people. It's a sign of a new agreement. The old agreement was what? With Moses and Abraham. God made an agreement with them, and they follow sacrifices and all that. But the new agreement is not the blood and body of a ram or a goat or a dove, but his body. That's the new agreement. His blood. 
His life sacrificed for you and for me. And that life and that sacrifice so we can have forgiveness of sins. In the Old Testament, the lamb, the sins were not forgiving. It was postponed. The punishment was postponed. But now in Jesus Christ, sin is forgiven. Okay. Verse 25. I want you to know I will not drink this wine again until that day when I drink it in God's kingdom and the wine is new. This is a little hard to understand. What does it mean, wine? Does he want us to get drunk? No, we're not talking about wine. It's the new agreement, the new way to connect with God. Through what? Through Jesus Christ, His blood, His sacrifice, His life. It's a new way. This is the last time Jesus is going to eat with them and he'll never share wine with them again. But later, he's going to share a new, different agreement, a different wine, quote-unquote. Not in a bottle. A relationship with God himself, okay? Verse 26. They all sang a song and then went out to the Mount of Olives. So now the meal is finished and Jesus knew that he was very soon going to be arrested and given over to the Pharisees and they would kill him. He knew that. He's trying to prepare the twelve apostles so that they will understand so let's see what happens on the Mount of Olives in the garden. Verse 27, Then Jesus told the followers, You will all lose your faith. The scriptures say, I will kill the shepherd and the sheep will run away. Jesus is telling them, you're going to lose your faith in me. You're going to become afraid of what's going to happen shortly. And I'm going to be alone by myself, the shepherd. And all of you will leave me. He's warning them so when it happens, they will understand and say, oh, that's what we did. They won't be surprised or depressed or, oh, I wish I hadn't. I wish I had done more to help Jesus. But Jesus didn't want them to stop the crucifixion. He wanted to go through the crucifixion. He had to. Jesus was crucified and gave up his life so that our sins could be forgiven. Verse 28, But after I am killed, I will rise from the dead. Then I will go to Galilee. I will be there before you come. Jesus was trying to encourage their hearts because they were thinking it's sad that Jesus was going to die, but he wasn't going to stay dead. After he resurrected, he would meet them in Galilee because that's where most of Jesus' ministry was done there. Only about three or four months was done in the south. Most of this time was in the north, in Galilee. 
and he knew they would prefer to be there. And so they were going to meet Jesus there. Verse 29. Peter said, All the other followers may lose their faith, but my faith will never be shaken. I'm going to trust you continually. Peter was so proud about his own strong faith. But now watch what Jesus says. Verse 30. Jesus answered, The truth is, tonight you will say you don't know me. You will say it three times before the rooster crows twice. Jesus is telling Peter, You think you have such strong faith and believe in me? But you will deny that you know me. You're going to say, I don't know who Jesus is. Three times. And Peter said, verse 31, But Peter strongly protested, I will never say I don't know you. I will even die with you. And all the other followers said the same thing. They were all saying, Oh no, we'll be with you. We'll protect you. But Jesus already knew that they would leave him. But he was trying to assure them, It's okay. These things must happen. All right? Verse 32. Jesus and his disciples went to a place named Gethsemane. It's a garden. And he said to them, Sit here while I pray. Remember, Jesus has a lot of stress. He knows what's going to happen. He knows that there's going to be a lot of suffering, a lot of pain. He knows that's going to happen, and he's thinking about that. And the others were sort of clueless. They thought, okay, what he's saying is true, but they thought we could save Jesus at the last minute, somehow. We're going to stay with you to save you. But Jesus knew that they would all leave him and leave him alone. And he asked them, Pray with me tonight, right now. Pray with me. A lot of stress. Verse 33. But he told Peter, James, and John, to come with him. And he began to be very distressed and troubled in his mind. Notice it's the same three followers who saw him changed on the mountain and became white. It's those same three men, Peter, James, and John, the two brothers. Those three were especially close to Jesus. They knew him better than the others. Verse 34 And he said to them, My heart is so heavy with grief. I feel as if I'm dying. Wait here and stay awake. Don't fall asleep. Stay awake. Verse 35. Jesus went on a little farther away from them. He fell to the ground and prayed. He asked that if possible, he would not have this time of suffering. We see Jesus' heart was very, very upset because he knew what was going to happen. He could feel the pain already. He knew that 
Everyone would leave him. He would be by himself to face the soldiers, and they would beat him. He knew he would die on the cross. So imagine he had to think of all this pain and suffering for you and for me. I can't imagine what would happen. Verse 36. Now Jesus was kneeling and praying, and he said, Abba, Father, you can do all things. Don't make me drink from this cup. But do what you want, not what I want. Jesus was asking if there was some other way that I don't have to drink this cup. Well, what was the cup? The suffering, the death, all alone all the pain, all the sorrow, all the frustration. That was like a cup, a bitter drink, something he didn't want to drink. But Jesus says, what? Not what I want, but what you want, obedient to the Father, all the way to the end. He didn't stop in the middle. Jesus could have Stopped any time. He could have said, no, I'm not going to do it. Come and save me. And God would have. But Jesus knew that if he did not go to the cross, what would happen? Sin would continue to increase. He wanted sin to decrease. He wanted redemption, freedom from sin for the people. So he was willing to obey the Father completely, not holding back even a little bit, completely obedient to God. Verse 37. Then he went back to his followers and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, Simon, why are you sleeping? Could you not stay awake with me for one hour? Couldn't you pray with me just one hour? You fell asleep, and the three of them were unsure of what to say. Jesus said, okay. Verse 38. Stay awake and pray for strength against temptation. Your spirit wants to do what is right, but your body is weak. Jesus is telling them, you want to be with me. You want to help me. You want to stay with me. Have strong faith, but your body is weak. You keep falling asleep. Verse 39 and 40. Again, Jesus went away and prayed the same thing. And then he went back to the followers and again found them sleeping. They could not stay awake. They did not know what they should say to him. They were embarrassed. Jesus asked them, just one hour, pray with me, that God would give me strength. And they said, yes, 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 and then fell asleep right away. So Jesus was alone even before all of them left. He was still all alone because those three couldn't stay awake. Verse 41. After Jesus prayed a third time, he went back to his followers, and he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? That's enough. The time has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to the control of sinful men. Jesus saw in the distance Judas coming. 
with the army. You see him? So he tells those three, it's okay. You don't have to stay awake anymore. Just rest. It's fine. And verse 42, stand up. We must go. Here comes the man who is handing me over to them, to the Pharisees, the evil people. Do you see in the picture who's coming? It's Judas coming with the soldiers to arrest Jesus. So that's it. He's telling them, those three, pray with him, but they couldn't stay awake. So now it's time for Jesus to be arrested, going to court, and killed. So what do I learn from this study? Number one, Jesus comforts his followers. In verse 28, he tells them, I'm going to be left alone, but it's okay. I'm going to go and meet you in Galilee after I rise from the dead. He promises to encourage them so that they understand that his death is not the end, but that he will be resurrected. He tells them, I'm going to meet them in Galilee. Also, when he finds them asleep over and over, Jesus said, it's okay. Don't worry about it. God knows the Father has planned all of this to happen, and I'm willing. So he's trying to encourage them as they woke up. Again, who's coming? And they see the soldiers. Number two, Jesus knows the whole future about himself. He doesn't guess. He's not surprised. He knew what was going to happen. That's why we see Jesus so calm. He wasn't all excited. Oh my gosh, the soldiers are coming. No, Jesus just said, here comes the man that's going to hand me over and the soldiers. He doesn't get upset. He doesn't curse them. He doesn't try to fight. He's very calm. So he knows the future, what's going to happen. He knows that he is going to be left alone. He knows they're all going to leave him. He's going to be left by himself. He knows that. But he doesn't rebuke them. He doesn't correct them. He doesn't yell at them. He knows. They're all going to leave him. But don't worry. I'll see you again, he tells them, after the resurrection. And they weren't sure what he meant by resurrection. But he knew. He knew that he was going to be arrested and killed. And he knew who would do it. He knew it was Judas who would lead the soldiers to arrest him. He knew that. Imagine one of your friends, one of your best friends, hand you over to your enemies to be killed. Jesus knew that that was going to happen. He knew about the suffering and the pain. And he knew he would rise from the dead. Wonderful that Jesus was able to comfort and encourage his followers so that they didn't become depressed they had a little bit of an understanding that Jesus would die and rise again. 
Maybe it's true that it would happen. But Jesus knew that it would happen. Number three. Jesus begins communion to remember his cross. Communion is something very important. Something very humbling. Something serious. It's not just piece of bread and a little drink. No, it's, we need to think, what does it mean? Now, when did it come from? Jesus said, what about the bread that it's my body? That means it shows his body. This wine is his blood. It's a very serious thing. When we have communion, we need to think about what happened to Jesus a long time ago. Communion shows that Jesus' work was complete, finished. How does it show that? Because we eat it. We eat the bread. It's gone. We drink the cup. It's gone complete work. So his work on the cross was finished. It wasn't half done. There was not something else to do. He finished all the work. And on the cross he said what? It is finished. Communion shows us that, that it was finished. Communion shows a personal joining with Jesus. Just like if you go to a friend's house for dinner and you sit there at the dinner and you eat nothing. You just sit there and chat and you don't eat anything. Are you joined with your friends? Not really. How can you join with your friends? Eat with them. So it's the same with Jesus. He's offering his body and blood, and I'm joining that in communion. It shows I personally, you personally, have joined with Jesus. That's why we warn people, if you don't believe in Jesus, you should not Eat the bread or drink the cup. Make sure you believe in Jesus. Make sure that you and Jesus are joined together. That you and I personally, not like a group, them or their, but you and I personally joined with Jesus. And it shows continuous work of Jesus until the end of time. Jesus said, Do this to remember me. As often as you do it, we remember Jesus on the cross, that he died and rose again. Remember until Jesus comes back. Paul wrote that in a letter in 1 Corinthians. Chapter 15, you can see that. It explains that we remember His work. We remember that His work did not stop, but continues on. How? In the hearts of people who believe. Jesus is still forgiving sins, changing hearts, changing minds, changing lives. Today, 2,000 years later. And it will continue. And how do we remember that? By communion. Communion helps us to remember that Jesus is still saving people today. Okay. Okay. Wonderful that communion reminds us of what Jesus did. 
Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this time together. We pray that you would remind us of your great work in saving people from sin. We pray that you would save us, help us to have strong faith. Remind us of your great sacrifice, giving up your life for our sin, accepting our punishment in your own body. Bless each one watching tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, thank you so much for watching tonight. And we hope that your heart has been touched by God and changed. We'll see you again next week, same time, 7.30. God bless you. Mm -hmm.